This is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. Glad to have you with us on this Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Matter. And I'm Ray Collins. We're halfway there. John Scalzi calls it hump day. Good morning, John. <laughs> That's right. We're creeping toward Little Friday. Almost Absolutely here. right. Tomorrow <laughs> we're looking at uh, some pretty quiet conditions too. Going straight to the radar, you can see we're looking at uh, not much in the way of any kind of radar echoes. It'll be quiet across the region. Daytime highs will top out warm again around 92, and we'll have about a 30% chance of rain. Your complete forecast in a minute. All right, let's check Suncoast traffic. First off, we'll check. Uh, looks like Midtown Sarasota. A little blip there on the screen. Uh, that is the juncture where you uh, bear left toward Mound on 41 at 301. So we'll check back with other maps a little later on in the morning. 501 right now on your Wednesday. Topping our news this morning, a heated debate over allowing concealed carry in the Sarasota court room is finally seeing its day in court. The issue is between the Chief Judge Charles Williams and the Sarasota County Sheriff Tom Knight. It erupted this past spring. Jess Dowdrick is now live outside the Sarasota County Courthouse. Jess? Good morning, Jacqueline and Ray. The tension all started back in February when State Senator Greg Stubbe tried to enter the clerk of court's office here at the courthouse with a concealed weapon. He was denied by a sheriff's deputy and a private security guard, even with his concealed weapons permit. Now, Stubbe argues that that violates the state constitution, citing a statute that says concealed weapons aren't allowed in courtrooms, but should be allowed in government offices. Sheriff Knight agreed and removed all deputies from security checkpoints. In response, Chief Court Judge Charles Williams issued an administrative order demanding the sheriff reinstate the deputies. Knight refused. Now the sheriff faces the possibility of being found in contempt of court while the judge could be fined or removed from office for making a constitutional administrative order according to to Stubbe. Now today, the second district court of appeal in Hillsborough County will hear both sides and then a decision will be made. Reporting live in Sarasota, Jess Aldrich, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Jess. In Manatee County, one area in Oneco continues to deal with the effects of crime. The sheriff's office there says the Pride Park neighborhoods account for nearly 10% of all the crimes in Manatee County. Our Rick Adams has a closer look. Well, the Manatee County Sheriff's Office says this area around Pride Park is filled with lots of crime. They tell us they're going to do everything they can to crack down on this very aggressively. It's every night you hear it. You know, you can hear the gunshots going off. That's what Michael LeClaire, his girlfriend, and his 13-year-old son have to deal with in this neighborhood across the street from Pride Park in Bradenton. It's kind of a shame that when we first moved here, we had a plan for, you know, how to evacuate and prepare for gunshots before we had a plan on how to evacuate for hurricanes. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office says crime continues to rise in the two to three square mile radius surrounding Pride Park. A majority of the crimes that take place include aggravated assaults, robberies, and home burglaries. In fact, there have already been 97 aggravated assaults so far this year compared to 76 for all of last year. The Sheriff's Office will be adding more deputies to the area as they become available, especially nights and weekends. The hopes and goals are with the more deputies, the more um, the more available we are, the more we're seen in areas that will deter the crime and uh, provide a safer atmosphere. This news has a lot of folks who live around Pride Park very happy. It's also refreshing news for people who enjoy the park, like Brenda Fulton. She says she walks her dog at Pride Park frequently. I would feel more safe if you knew I, I have seen at, at different times when I was in there and there was a couple deputies sitting in the park and that made me feel better. And if you do see anything suspicious around any of the Pride Park neighborhoods here, you're being asked to contact the Manatee County Sheriff's Office immediately. Reporting from Bradenton, I'm Rick Adams, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Happening today, a Bradenton mother accused of killing her daughter and putting her body in a freezer is back in court. According to the Manatee County Clerk of Courts website, a plea hearing is set for Kishana Thomas this morning. She is accused of killing her 11-year-old daughter, Janiah, who was first reported missing in September of 2015. A few weeks later, her body was found in a freezer stored in a relative's home. Aside from the murder charge, Thomas also faces a charge of child abuse and abuse of a dead body. She could still avoid trial by pleading guilty. Meanwhile, a woman is fighting for her life this morning after a fire ripped through her Sarasota home yesterday. The fire broke out at a house on Las Vegas Drive just off Proctor Road. The state fire marshal's office, Sarasota County Sheriff's Office, and Sarasota County Fire Department are all working on that investigation. 
The cause is still a mystery, but investigators say it appears the fire started in one of the bedrooms and they do not believe it was intentionally set. Neighbors say the woman already had burns up her arm before running back inside to save her dog. She was a nice lady and she had a dog too. That's the only thing I knew, but she was a nice lady. She said hi to me, I say hi back. The woman was later taken to Sarasota Memorial Hospital for treatment. The investigation is expected to continue later today. A driver is behind bars this morning after the Charlotte County Sheriff's K-9 team found he was trafficking oxycodone. A deputy pulled over Marcus Davis for a traffic violation, and his canine sniffed the vehicle and found two bags containing pills later identified as oxycodone. Davis is now facing charges with trafficking oxycodone and drug paraphernalia possession. The car's passenger, Guillermo Garcia, was on felony probation already and out past curfew, so he was also arrested. Police departments around the country, including right here on the Sun Coast, are growing increasingly concerned about carbon monoxide leaks in some vehicles. There have been multiple incidents involving the 2016 Ford Explorer. That's the same vehicle Northport's police also use. Ford is investigating, and so far the company is blaming aftermarket products such as light bars and laptop wiring installed in the vehicles. Police departments hire third-party companies to install those extras, and some may not be fully sealing the holes they've drilled to run wiring around the SUVs. We discovered unsealed spaces in the back of their vehicles related to the installation of police equipment. We have had no reports. Uh, we've been following the most recent update with Ford. The Northport Police Department has 42 of those Ford Explorers. They'll be installing carbon monoxide monitors soon, but have not had any issues so far. In local consumer news, business is booming at Port Manatee. The port's container volume for the first 10 months of the fiscal year has already reached a full year record. The port saw moves of over 32,000 container units. The previous record was 30,000. Port officials say the increase is due to its longtime tenant, Del Monte Fresh Produce, and its imports of Central American pineapples and bananas. The new state education bill has some local school officials crying foul. The lengthy bill calls for things like additional teacher bonuses and funding for kids with special needs. But the provision that drew the most criticism was the call for districts to share millions of taxpayer dollars with charter schools. With a few projects in the works already, Sarasota School Board officials have mixed feelings on whether the bill may disrupt those plans. It hits our operating budget, it hits our capital budget, and it's taken away about $10 million of our money that we had, our money, it's really the community's money, that we've had to buy a piece of property that we need desperately to build another school. But think about it is if, if they open up more charter schools, the need to build an elementary school goes down, and so the need for the capital to build that elementary school goes down. The bill would also give local school districts control over teacher evaluation. And new college police chief Michael Kessie is now a district director for the Florida Police Chiefs Association. Kessie will bring members' concerns to the association leaders and voice the group's initiatives to the community. The association is made up of more than 1,000 law enforcement officials who lead municipal, airport, and college police departments across the state. GOP gubernatorial candidate Adam Putnam came to Sarasota yesterday to meet Florida's Principal of the Year, Booker High School's Rachel Shelley. The current Commissioner of Agriculture congratulated Shelley and praised her for running an extraordinary comprehensive high school. Putnam went on to say if elected, one of his priorities would be to put the spotlight on career and technical education. I'm a product of vocational education, FFA, but when you look at the needs of the 21st century economy, we've got to do more to put career and technical education into the middle school and the high school to prepare our kids to compete in a world economy and win. Also on hand, Superintendent Todd Bowden and board member Eric Robinson. And it's now official. Manatee County's newest high school has a name. Last night, the board approved to name, its North, name it North River High School. It'll be in Parrish, north of the river. It opens in two years in time for the 2019 school year. So up next, hiring a principal and then choosing a mascot and school colors. A follow-up now on a community effort we first told you about earlier this week. The Tiny Hands Foundation has now released numbers on its effort to distribute school supplies to students in need. More than 1,500 students received backpacks full of supplies at the Sarasota Boys and Girls Club on Saturday. Now hundreds of low-income children in our community are ready for their first day of school. 
The Tiny Hands Foundation says its events have helped around 45,000 families in Manatee, DeSoto, and Sarasota County. In Sarasota County, parents and community members can stay up to date on school events and information, all thanks to a new app. Parents can choose specific schools to follow for their district calendars, their lunch menus, and also keep up with sports teams. Users can also access the district's student and parent portal to track your kids' grades and their attendance. That's always important. It's designed for smartphones and tablets. You can download it now on the Apple, Google, or Android App Store. That is a great use of uh, technology. You know? Yes, really it is. is. I, I'm sure there's lots of kids who don't want their parents <laughs> tracking that's their true. grades and attendance, but hey, keeps yeah. them in line. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's that's really terrific. Uh, showers in the forecast, a few. Didn't we? we had a couple around yesterday. Did you hear the thunder yes, booming? Yes, I did. Wake you up, woke me up. Uh, those showers will be around again this afternoon. We'll talk about that in a sec. All right, thanks, John. Still ahead, hundreds of thousands of kids across the nation miss school each day due to bullying. We'll take a look at a new way they're targeting your kid and what you need to know to combat it. And later in the hour, President Trump's latest comments on North Korea causing a big reaction. We'll tell you the two words he used at 533. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. During the past 10 years, Tidewell Hospice Volunteers have provided more than 1 million hours of service. They sit with patients, giving caregivers a break. They work in offices. They take their furry friends on pet therapy visits. They even clown around. Every task performed by a volunteer makes a difference in the lives of our patients and their families. Join Tidewell's volunteer team. They're truly one in a million. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. So you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So pop quiz, which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. In the park on a bench, on the beach on a towel, or on your couch with your kid, your campus is wherever you want it to be. You don't go to college, college goes to you. That's Independence, that's Independence University. You schedule classes around your schedule and all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet are included with tuition. At Independence U, you'll learn from professional instructors with real work experience. You'll get personal support in school and employment assistance when you graduate. Get your degree, but keep your life. That's Independence. That's Independence University. So if you're really smart, you'd call now. Call 1-800-319-0237. Independence U for an independent you. Call 1-800-319-0237. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah, yeah. Explore amazing merchants on the Sun Coast. Find great prices, products, and services. Go to mysuncoast.com to buy local today. Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. So we're looking at a current air temperature as you head out the door of 77 degrees with a dew point of 73. That is almost exactly where it was yesterday. Not a whole lot has changed really in the forecast for at least today. Now down the road, there may be some changes. We'll talk about that in just a minute. 73, the dew point as I mentioned. Calm winds currently will shift more to the southeast today and then eventually to the southwest with the sea breeze front close to the coastline. 77 Mayaka, 76 in Arcadia. Northport comes in at 78, Parish at 77, Bradenton at 78. 
Sarasota 7778 in Venice and Inglewood and 80 degrees at Longbow Key. We had a few big showers around yesterday that kind of exploded as they moved in from inland areas and met our sea breeze front. Then they moved out into Gulf waters and kind of dissipated. So we got a little bit of coverage around yesterday, a little bit more rainfall. It's been a pretty good rainy season thus far, and this additional rainfall is nice to see. Currently quiet. Don't expect much in the way of rain during your morning commute. All area roadways dry as a bone this morning and will be that way through the morning hours. Again, the timing of the showers, probably late in the afternoon, early in the evening. They'll start building in inland areas, and then we'll watch them march toward sunset, toward Gulf waters, where they'll eventually die out in the Gulf. The uh, rainfall accumulation yesterday was pretty good. A lot of the stuff rained out in inland areas and just brought a little bit of light rain to the coastline. Definitely inland had the heaviest rainfall totals, with some places seeing two to three inch rainfalls under some of the thunderstorms that built. Then closer to the coastline, we measured our rainfall in tenths of an inch. Uh, as far as today goes, we've got a couple of things on the boards that we're going to be watching. Of course, Franklin has now exited the Yucatan, continuing on a course through the uh, Bay of Campeche toward Mexico. We have a frontal boundary still stalled out to our north. It's not going to move into the state of Florida. It's just going to hang right there, but it could bring some coastal rain showers to the mid-Atlantic. We have a high-pressure ridge sitting off the Atlantic coast. Again, that's the same thing that has been hanging tight there for the last several days, bringing us that southeasterly wind. And further out in the Atlantic, we have something we're watching as well. We'll talk about in a moment. That high pressure ridge brings us the southeast wind, sets up the scenario of showers building along the spine of the state, pushes those showers toward the coastline where they meet our sea breeze front. They become larger storms and then they eventually just die out with the heat of the day. Today, a high heat index again of 100 to 105. We had a 112 degree heat index in inland areas yesterday. So uh, again, I think we're going to do that same sort of thing. West moving storms late in the day and then lots of sunshine. So here's Franklin. Again, that is a little concern to the state of Florida, except for those people with interests in Mexico that continues to drift toward the west. Further to the east out in the central Atlantic is a very benign looking cluster of showers. But all the reliable computer models suggest that down the road that system will eventually, as it moves into more favorable conditions north, will develop and some computer models even suggest into a hurricane so we have a 40 percent chance of watching development there five days down the road and here's the computer model simulations now i i will tell you that all of these computer models suggest a turn to the north keeping the system out into the open atlantic but if you have a hurricane that close to the state of florida five days down the road you know you have to keep that in the back of your mind and keep abreast of the forecast right straight through the weekend Although I suspect it will not be of any importance to the state of Florida, other than it might uptick our rain chances as we head into next work week. So we'll keep an eye on it for you. We'll uh, trace its evolution and let you know what proceeds from that system. Right now, I have decided not to up the rain chances for the beginning of next work week for the start of the new school year in Sarasota, but nevertheless, we'll keep an eye on it. Otherwise, 30 to 40 percent chance of showers should carry us into the weekend. Back to you. All right. Thank you, John. Taking a look at traffic in Manatee County, really quiet throughout that area. Not a whole lot to report as we head south into Sarasota County. Looks like there are some slowdowns on Fruitville as you head towards uh, 301. Also, uh, B Ridge as you get off of 41, I-75 looking clear, and South County pretty quiet. Lots of people sleeping on this last day before the start of the school year. That's true. We'll <laughs> see a big change tomorrow on the commute. That's right. We certainly will. At least in Manatee County. Speaking of schools back in session, one in five students between 12 and 18 experience cyberbullying. That's right. It's the new kind of bullying that's easier to carry out but harder to discover. I took a look into how Manatee County schools are tackling the issue this school year. Every seven minutes, a child in the U.S. will be bullied. It may be the son or daughter of someone you know, or worse, it may be your own. Any kid that's dealing with some type of ridicule, criticism from their peers, uh, made to feel like they're not a part of the school community, it's going to weigh heavy on their mind. And those are the things that get in the way of student learning. Skip Wilhoit with the Safe Schools Organization works hand in hand with the Manatee County School District and says nationally more than 160,000 children miss school every day out of fear of being bullied. 
He says it takes many forms, but bullying the way many of us know it is now a thing of the past. While violence and name calling still happens, cyberbullying is the new norm. When a student is a victim of cyberbullying, it really impacts the student's ability to perform in school. And whether it takes place inside of school or outside of school, we're allowed to intervene in order to help protect our students. Will Hoyt says kids who are cyberbullied are more likely to skip school, use alcohol and drugs, have low self-esteem or health problems. His organization provides seminars to kids of all ages to preach prevention. When we talk to kids about it, we not only want them to know what bullying looks like when they see it, but also what to do when they do see it. And that way they can recognize it and act appropriately. The Safe Schools initiative is more than a decade old, and Will Hoyt says cyberbullying is the new obstacle to tackle when it comes to keeping students safe. The worst thing that students can do is just ignore it or, you know, just let it absorb. Uh, and then they internalize these things. Or if they want to respond in, in a way that's probably going to evoke a, a harsher response from the bully or bullies, contact a, uh, the service provider. And if they're violating the user terms of service, you can go ahead and report them. However, a new messaging app topping the charts isn't helping in the fight against cyberbullying. Using the app Saraha, users can hide behind their phones and send messages to one another anonymously. While it's rated for users 17 and up, many children are downloading the app and using it to bully others. Will Hoyt recommends parents keep a close eye on their kid's phone to prevent cyberbullying and to monitor social media. Know your kid, watch your kid, and look for any type of change and then talk with your child. Parents can set parental controls on iPhones by changing settings on their child's iPhone. And if you were interested in learning how to set out those um, parental controls, you can head over to our website, mysuncoast.com. It has a full list of the steps that you'll need to be, be able to take those parental controls off and change them on your child's iPhone to keep them safe. You know, technology certainly has changed, but bullying hasn't oh. changed, really. We've all experienced it through our lives. That's very true. I think people of all ages have experienced it, and it, it, it's taken a new form through cyberbullying, a little bit more of a harsher form, I feel like, because people hide behind a, a screen. So. Yeah, I've known of students who've had to transfer out of schools due yeah, to wow. some cruel classmates. Very right. sad. All right, 522 right now. Still had a good morning in Sun Coast. We'll tell you why Disney plans on pulling its content from Netflix. And coming up at 530, a safe haven for drug users discovered operating in the U.S. for nearly three years. We'll tell you why several states are pushing for similar government-run operations when we come back. Jacuzzi is proud to present our first ever safe bathing event. The Jacuzzi walk-in tub allows you or a loved one to take a safe and relaxing bath. Never climb in and out of a regular bathtub again. Our walk-in tub offers a low step-in threshold, fast drain technology, soothing hydrotherapy, and even a shower handle. Regain bathing independence with a Jacuzzi walk-in tub and enjoy spending more time with loved ones. Why wait any longer? During our safe bathing event, save $750 on a new walk-in tub, receive $250 in safety upgrades, and a $100 Visa gift card. But if you call right now during this program, we'll double the savings to $1,500, double the safety upgrades to $500, and double it to a $200 Visa gift card with your walk-in tub purchase. Going back to where it all began in 1956, Jacuzzi Incorporated was founded and the Whirlpool bathing category was born. Jacuzzi's patented Hydra Massage Jets provide an unmatched bathing experience. Jacuzzi is proud to present our first ever safe bathing event. Never climb in and out of a regular bathtub again. Our walk-in tub offers a low step-in threshold, fast drain technology, soothing hydrotherapy and even a shower handle. During our safe bathing event, save $750 on a new walk-in tub, receive $250 in safety upgrades, and a $100 Visa gift card. But if you call right now during this program, we'll double the savings to $1,500, double the safety upgrades to $500, and double it to a $200 Visa gift card with your walk-in tub purchase. A safe and relaxing bath is only a phone call away. Call right now to save double on a new walk-in tub. Call now.
You know, we like to post things to our individual Facebook pages. I like to post funny moments we had on the show. And John, <laughs> John Scalzi found something unusual in his shower two mornings ago. So if you go to Ray Collins, ABC7 on Facebook, you'll see that 30-second clip of that moment on uh, our show. I couldn't imagine. Also, we have, uh, you know, back to school any day now. I'd love to see some pictures of people as they head back to school. Maybe some, some funny pictures you have with your family. I know I'm going to post some of my my pictures on Facebook from back to school. Yeah. If you can find any, we'll find some. Well, we, they, they didn't have cameras when I was that growing up. You know, I sent you one already to I use. I know. You did. You yeah, did. All right. All right. It is 525 this morning, and Samsung is out with a tougher smartphone meant to counter criticism that some past models have been too fragile. And Disney is pulling its movies from Netflix to start its own streaming service. ABC's Diane Macedo and Kendis Gibson have details. In today's tech bites, a stronger Samsung Galaxy S8. The S8 Active is shedding its all-glass body for a military-grade metal frame with four bumpers and a shatter-resistant layer over the screen. It also sports a bigger battery and comes out on Friday. Disney is cutting ties with Netflix and launching its own streaming service. So Disney will offer its movies, TV shows, and sports and charge consumers directly. So Disney and Pixar classics and new content will be available exclusively through the new subscription app available in 2019. Disney is, of course, a parent company of ABC. And call this one too little, too late. The guy who invented all those annoying computer password rules says he's sorry. And former tech manager Bill Burr came up with the uppercase, lowercase, special character thing. He says the guidelines he wrote 15 years ago are probably too complicated. You yeah. think? Um, Asterix, yeah. exclamation uh, point. All of the above. Those are your tech bites. Have a good one. Working hard to lower your LDL bad cholesterol? Not making enough progress? You eat well, take the highest dose statin you can, but still aren't getting where you need to be. Now there's Repatha, a different way to reduce LDL and get on the path to dramatically lower numbers. Repatha works differently than your statin to help clear LDL. Repatha plus the highest dose statin drove down LDL an average of 71% more than a statin alone. Do not take Repatha if you are allergic to it. Repatha may cause allergic reactions. Signs include redness, severe rash or itching, swollen face, or trouble breathing. The most common side effects include runny nose, sore throat, common cold symptoms, flu or flu-like symptoms, back pain, and redness, pain, or bruising at the injection site. Added to a highest dose stat, Repatha lowered LDL below 70 for up to 90% of people. Ask if Repatha can get you on the path to way lower LDL. The kitchen is where life happens. Minnesota Flooring now offers a wide variety of beautiful quality craft-made cabinetry to make sure the heart of your home reflects your style. Visit us today at our new kitchen and bath cabinetry locations. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory, so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad, and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. If you're thinking about replacing your windows, what matters most to you? We found what matters is high performance. Our customers want energy efficient windows built for Florida weather. Windows that can stand everything from scorching sun to hurricanes. Our customers want windows that reflect their life, their lifestyle. Windows that will last a lifetime. We listen to our customers and as a result, we're growing. So if you're looking to replace your windows, stop here at New South Window. Buy more, save more. Volume discounts on four or more windows. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month. 
you'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received JD Power Awards for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317 Go online or visit a Target store today. Start your day with Ray, Jacqueline, and John, the new Good Morning Suncoast team. Weekdays starting at 5 a.m. on ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. This half hour on Good Morning Suncoast, the U.S. territory in Guam is on alert. This after North Korea ups the rhetoric after President Trump's threat of fire and fury. Plus, a toddler found dead inside a van outside a daycare center in Orlando. Why family and friends now are calling for justice. And we'll tell you how much shoppers saved in last weekend's tax-free back-to-school shopping today. Those stories right now on Good Morning Suncoast. Live from the ABC7 studios, this is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. And good morning. Welcome back. August the 9th, the day before school begins in Manatee County. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. Certainly glad to have you with us this morning. Lots of people sleeping in this morning before yeah. they head to school tomorrow. Also, lots of people trying to get back on that school schedule. So. Not it'll easy. be it'll be difficult tomorrow yes. for a lot of people. Let's get the uh, forecast first off from meteorologist John Scalzi. We are looking at uh, some pretty pleasant conditions today. Like yesterday, we have showers and thunderstorms in the forecast later on. But most of the day will be spent sunny and warm with daytime feels like temperatures of 100 to 105. Taking a look at radar right now, a few scattered showers out in Gulf waters. They'll stay there. Plenty of sunshine to start the day as we boost our temperatures up into the lower 90s. We'll have the complete forecast for you in a minute. All right. Talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Let's check the roads. First off in Manatee County. Pretty quiet out there right now. A little buildup on 41 northbound as you approach State Road 70. Farther south now into uh, Sarasota County. You'll see a problem there uh, on Clark Road as you head westbound around Beneva. And then checking our final map in the South County region, we'll see nothing much to report at 533 on your Wednesday morning. Topping our news this half hour, a feud over allowing concealed carry in the Sarasota Courthouse is finally seeing its day in court. It's a dispute between the county's chief judge and the county sheriff. Jess Dowdrick is live now from the courthouse in Sarasota with the latest. Jess? Good morning, Jacqueline and Ray. The tension all started back in February when State Senator Greg Stubbe tried to enter the clerk of court's office here at the Sarasota County Courthouse with a concealed weapon. He was turned away by a sheriff's deputy and a private security guard, even though he had a concealed carry permit. Now, Stubbe argues that this violates the state constitution, citing a statute that says concealed weapons aren't allowed in courtrooms, but should be allowed in government offices. Sheriff Knight agreed and removed all deputies from security checkpoints. In response, Chief Court Judge Charles William issues an administrative order demanding the sheriff reinstate the deputies. Knight refused. Now the sheriff faces the possibility of being found in contempt of court while the judge could be fined or removed from office for making constitutional administrative orders, according to Stubbe. Now today, the second district court of appeals in Hillsborough County will hear this case and then they will make a decision. Reporting live in Sarasota, Jess Aldrich, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Jess. Now to that growing tension with North Korea. The rogue nation says it is carefully examining plans to attack Guam with medium to long range ballistic missiles. This as President Trump issues an ominous warning. ABC's Ariel Reshef has the latest. President Trump lashing out at North Korea. North Korea, best not make any more threats to the United States, they will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. 
An unprecedented war of words with the rogue nation. Fury and frankly power. As the North promises fierce retaliation for crippling UN Security Council sanctions. Kim Jong-un contemplating medium and long-range ballistic missile strikes on Guam. The North Korean strongmen threatening and enveloping fire on the U.S. territory, home to several key military installations. The governor of Guam issuing this urgent video I message overnight, to attempting to reassure constituents. I'm working with Homeland Security the Rear Admiral and the United States to ensure our safety. And world leaders reacting swiftly. The Japanese and South Korean governments standing with the U.S. saying all options remain on the table. The escalating tensions made all the more alarming amid new revelations about North Korea's nuclear capability. ABC News confirming U.S. intelligence analysts believe the North can now produce a miniaturized nuclear warhead. This is the most momentous day in his nuclear program. The news coming days after North Korea test-fired a long-range ballistic missile capable of hitting the U.S. mainland. And U.S. intelligence officials believe that North Korea has as many as 60 nuclear weapons, far more than once thought. Ariel Reshef, ABC News, Washington. A follow-up now in the manhunt of an accused cop killer in Missouri. State police say they've got their man. Here he is, Ian McCarthy, accused of killing 37-year-old officer Gary Michael during a traffic stop on Sunday. McCarthy drove away, but shortly after, police say he crashed his SUV and fled on foot. They say he, they found him last night walking down the middle of the road. The officer was the first one ever killed in Clinton, a small town 75 miles southeast of Kansas City. It was the officer's first year on the force. A new report reveals a safe haven for heroin and drug users has been quietly operating in the U.S. for the past three years. Two researchers said they've been evaluating an underground safe place that's been open since 2014. It's unsanctioned and potentially illegal and has been used by more than 100 people. Although they did not disclose the exact location of the facility as a condition of their research, several states and cities are now pushing to establish supervised injection sites where users can shoot up under the care of trained staff who can then properly treat them if they overdose. And similar sites are already legal in countries across Europe and Australia. Meanwhile, Coast Guard officials seized 1,200 pounds of marijuana in California earlier this week under some unusual circumstances. A boater called the Coast Guard about a battery issue while sailing in San Diego. When officials arrived to inspect the boat, they found around 50 bundles of marijuana. Two people were on board at the time who were both later arrested. Coast Guard officials believe the drugs were brought in from another country. In Mexico, police say they've rescued 34 women believed to be victims of sex trafficking. Police searched two bars in Cancu Cancun resorts. 32 of the women were Colombian, two were Venezuelan. One of the victims said their lives were being threatened. And they were told to avoid being reported to immigration authorities. They arrested one man in one of the resorts, but the investigation is far from over. In South Florida, activists protested a congressman's office over plans to support President Trump's border wall with Mexico. A hundred people rallied against plans to increase funding for immigration enforcement. They targeted Congressman Mario diaz Balart because he is on the Appropriations Committee that will vote on giving $1.6 million toward that wall project. A time capsule found hidden inside the base of a Civil War era statue in Orlando has finally been opened. The box was found in June when city officials were removing a Confederate statue from an Orlando park. The statue, which critics say symbolizes slavery, was moved to a cemetery. Inside that time capsule, there was money, newspapers, and what appeared to be a flag. There was also a letter from 1911 that had the names of members of the Florida Division of the Daughters of the Confederacy. All of the artifacts will be turned over to Orlando's History Center. Also in Orlando, a vigil for a little boy who died sitting in a hot car all day earlier this week. Family and friends want justice for three-year-old Miles Hill. Police found the boy Monday night in a van after receiving a call reporting possible child neglect. Investigators say the child had been in the hot van for possibly up to 11 hours. Charges are pending against the driver. More Zika cases are being reported across the Sunshine State. Health officials have added another 12 reported cases of the virus in the past week, including the first sexually transmitted case of 2017. So far, the state has reported 128 Zika infections this year. 
97 of these new cases have been classified as travel related, meaning people brought the mosquito borne virus into Florida after being infected elsewhere. Florida retailers say this year's back to school sales tax holiday was a big success. While official numbers aren't in yet, stores say the three day weekend was very good for business. The holiday was part of a large tax cut package that lawmakers passed this spring. It's estimated shoppers saved about $33 million in state and local taxes over the weekend. A spokesman for the Florida Retail Federation hopes the popularity of the holiday will entice lawmakers to again extend the time for tax free shopping, which has lasted up to 10 days in the past. We were obviously pushed for the longer the better. Uh, when it was 10 days, it was nice because it covered two pay periods. So for struggling for Florida families, they could spread out those payments over two periods, which was nice. But we're just happy we got the three days and we're excited about it. Florida is one of 16 states this year offering back to school breaks. Another tax holiday on disaster preparation time items was held in June to mark the start of the hurricane season. And the back to school supplies, John had a chance to go out and buy his Halloween costume. <laughs> Ninja costume. What cuts, are you right? going to be? Were, there were some strange things on that list. <laughs> That's not a bad idea, though, to extend it for two weeks, you know, two pay periods for, yeah. uh, for folks who like that. Right. And, and the rest of us can use it, too. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. We have uh, some uh, pleasant weather on the forecast, but a system out in the Atlantic Bear is watching. We'll talk about that in a sec. All right. Thanks, John. Still ahead, mammograms are vital for detecting breast cancer. We'll tell you why doctors are now saying certain women should no longer receive them. Up next in Health Smart. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I am creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah, yeah. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better and all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with mom, but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Attention, Royal Seas Cruises has just announced their deal of the day, a $99 Caribbean cruise for two people. This amazing cruise deal to the Bahamas is only available to the first 500 callers who register in your area today. So get ready to write down this number and act fast. We know that the best type of traveler is a repeat guest. So we're offering this $99 Caribbean cruise to prove it. That's $99 per couple, including your stateroom, all your delicious meals, full spa, live entertainment, three kids clubs and more. Come see why we were voted one of the top 10 best overall cruises by Cruise Critic. We're so sure you'll enjoy yourself and become a repeat customer that you're getting this deal of the day for the unbelievable low price of just $99 per couple. But you've got to act fast. Pick up the phone and be one of the first 500 callers to take the Caribbean cruise of a lifetime for just $99 per couple. Call right now or log on to RoyalCruiseNow.com. Call 800-906-0489. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or, heaven forbid, replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom-built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The Moore Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the Moore Space Place. Are you all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while.
Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. We're looking at air temperatures that are coming in warm again this morning, about where we would expect them to be and about where they were over the last 24 hours. 77 degrees, the air temperature, dew point 73. Clear skies out there right now. It's a nice start to the day. We have calm conditions, although those winds will be generally out of the southeast today. Uh, 76 in Wachula, Arcadia, Mayaka at 77, Parish, Bradenton, Sarasota, the same, so is Punta Gorda. 78 in Northport, 80, Longbow Key, but 79 degrees in Venice and Inglewood. Fairly uniform temperatures, give or take a couple of degrees from coast to inland areas. Had some showers around yesterday. Pretty good coverage, actually about a 50% coverage or so, but by far the heaviest of the storms were in inland areas where what you see originated. Those storms gradually drifting out into Gulf waters further from our coast posed no issue whatsoever. Of course, this morning, this morning we have pretty quiet conditions across the region. Now, yesterday, total accumulations were impressive in inland areas. That's where we saw the most amount of thunderstorm activity and the largest rainfall totals, with some places perhaps seeing as much as two to three inches of rainfall, according to Doppler radar estimates. Closer to the coastline, we're closer to the one inch to half an inch, with most places in the tenths of an inch. The forecast for today again calls for that southeasterly wind flow to draw moisture across the state, bringing us high heat indexes and fairly stable predictable weather over the next several days. Showers and thunderstorms in inland areas drifting to the coast, riding on a generally easterly to southeasterly wind flow. A frontal boundary stalled out to the north will eventually wash away. Little areas of low pressure will ripple along it, increasing rain chances particularly for the mid-Atlantic and for areas around Texas through the Louisiana Delta region today. Also, Franklin, Still, a tropical storm, even after its passage across the Yucatan, will continue on a track that takes it toward Mexico. It is of no threat to the United States. However, further out in the Atlantic, we have an interesting cluster of clouds and thunderstorms we'll talk about in a moment. Southeast wind pops up showers along the spine of the state and pushes them back to the coast. There'll be west movers again today, timing about the same, maybe a little earlier than yesterday, but a, a roughly late afternoon, they'll start in inland areas, and then as we head towards sunset hours, they'll drift closer to the coast and die out in Gulf waters. Forecast, well, for today, we'll continue to watch Franklin probably strengthen a little bit as it moves across these warm, deep waters of the Bay of Campeche toward Mexico, central Mexico. And then here's Florida. Further out from Florida is a small cluster of clouds that looks pretty inconsequential, actually. You look at that and you go, well, that's no worry, right? Well, hopefully it won't be. But computer models do suggest that it continues on a track that takes it off to the north and to the east and brings about a 40% chance of development as we head into the next five days. Watch as we put the computer models into motion. Now, I, I will say that most of these computer models, most all the good ones, kind of curve it up to the north and perhaps keep it out in the open waters of the Atlantic. That would be nice. However, a couple of them also strengthen it into a actual hurricane off the Atlantic coast. And any time you get a computer model suggesting you'll have a hurricane off the Atlantic coast five days out when the track is, you know, not even defined yet, the storm hasn't even developed yet, it bears watching. So as we head into the weekend, keep abreast of the forecasts and find out what's going on with this system. Hopefully it'll be of no consequence whatsoever. But it could bring a little additional rainfall as we head into the beginning of the next work week, so we'll keep an eye on that. 90 to 91 to 92 are daytime highs from coast to inland areas with heat indexes of 100 to 105. Back to you. All right, thank you, John. Traffic pretty quiet throughout Manatee County. Not a whole lot going on. I-75 and uh, 41 looking good as we head into Sarasota County. Just a few little blurps of slowdown on Clark Road and Fruitville. Other than that, looking good as we head south into South County. Some slowdowns throughout Venice, but other than that, no accidents at 549 on your Wednesday morning. In this hour's Health Smart, we're learning more about when certain women should start stop getting mammograms. According to a new study, some older breast cancer survivors often still get mammograms, while younger women are not being screened. 
About 70,000 women over 70 are diagnosed with breast cancer each year in this country. The American Cancer Society recommends that women without a history of breast cancer stop screening when their life expectancy is less than 10 years. And a new study says that music does not do anything to help treat autism. A group of Norwegian re researchers found that music therapy plus standard care does not improve autism symptoms any better than standard care alone. The study looked at 364 children between 4 and 7 years old after a 5-month period and concluded that any improvement from music therapy came at the expense of reduced improvement from standard care. Critics say the study needs a longer duration of observation before it can gain widespread scientific validation. You're always hearing the value of music. In this case, the study said it doesn't help. Exactly. Hmm. 5.50 right now. Still having Good Morning Sun Coast. We'll update the day's top local news headlines. And a group of hikers got some amazing video on their trip. We'll give you the details of this apparent butterfly boom after this. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them. And she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace? Call Back Brace America at 1-800-683-9262. Today at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. Future fashionistas create with recycled goods, plus Sarasota ladies arm wrestling and Sarah Fresh in the kitchen. Today at 4 on Suncoast View. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Pretty shot there again at the Ringling Causeway. I actually rode the bike yesterday over the bridge. Oh, yeah? Windy up there. Pretty quiet out there right now. We'll see some runners out there as the I morning know, progresses. Joggers don't like that bikers are on the sidewalk, too. Yeah. I get it. But it feels dangerous out there on the road. Right. The cars are going fast. Yeah. So I apologize to all the, the <laughs> joggers who I cycled by, and I, I saw your gestures, by the way. <laughs> 5.54 on this Wednesday morning. Let's take a look at some of the top stories here on the Sun Coast today. 
Manatee County has chosen a name for its newest high school and parish. The North River High School opens in two years. Up next, hiring a principal and choosing a mascot and school colors. Plus, a vigil was held last night for a three-year-old Orlando boy who died after being left in a hot daycare van all day. That driver is now facing charges. And Florida's annual sales tax holiday for back-to-school supplies saved consumers about $33 million last weekend. Florida, one of 16 states that waived taxes on back-to-school school supplies. Finally this hour, these hikers were swarmed by thousands of butterflies and it was all caught on camera. Take a look. One of the hikers says he was surrounded during a recent visit when he and his wife were atop Mount Scott for a couple of hours. The massive swarm stayed with them the entire time they were hiking. A park ranger later confirmed that the influx of California tortoise shell butterflies in Oregon is a phenomenon that's been happening every five to six years and nobody knows why. That'd be a little annoying after uh, a while. Well, yeah, but they're, I mean, they're butterflies. Oh. They're, they're, it's lots of good luck. That's what I would have said. Yeah, after about five, uh, about five <laughs> minutes of saying, still good luck, Jack? Yeah. Wow. Mm, interesting. That, that'd be kind of cool to experience, though. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Showers and thunderstorms in the forecast. Details on that coming up in a few. Also update the local news headlines in three minutes. We'll see you then.